Hello, this is Dreza, and welcome to the Intro to Abyssals by Eve University. Before I start on ahead, let me introduce myself. If you'd like to skip ahead and look at the content right away, then feel free to do so. My name is Dreza. I've been playing Eve for a little while now, and I'm also, amongst other things, the Abyssals Community Coordinator in Eve University a teacher and a mentor. Now, recent changes to Eve has brought slight tweaks to the dailies you'll be needing to do every day in order for you to receive your skill points. So I've decided, since this is content that I love to do myself, that I was gonna put online, and it was the best time to do so, this intro to Abyssals. This is a very much an intro and we'll not go into deeper things like T4s or beyond. You'll have tips and tricks among the videos here and there that you can refer down. And in the description of the video, you'll have timestamps where you can skip ahead to content that might more interest you or maybe skip the content that you already are aware of. So we'll be covering all the basics from the very beginning to the end of Abyssals. So without further ado, let me start this. Now here's what we're going to be reviewing throughout the class and we'll also be looking in game at some more tips while I'm describing and talking about different stuff. So we'll go through what we can find in the abyss as far as hazards, enemies, and other stuff that will be very interesting and important to know. What kind of options do you have if you're flying solo or in a fleet or maybe multi-boxing? What kind of rewards you can expect in there? And at the end, a few resources if you'd like to further your knowledge into the abyss, if you want to go further than just doing your dailies, that is. So the Abyssals is new content that was brought in Eve in May 29th, 2018. And it basically is an introduction to a new faction called the Triglavian. And it's PvE content. And in there you can meet different factions as well as the Trifters and the Triglavian collectives. So it was the first time we could see those new ships from all those different factions. So it's very interesting to to know that there in there there is some lore in element that you can find, but it's no longer relevant since it's been uh, released for so long now. Now this screen here can be found in game. I'll show you just a bit in a few seconds where you can find it. And it's going to explain to you a lot of different things. We'll be covering everything as the slides go along. Now there are different weather types in there. So before we go through all of them, let me show you in game, as I was saying, where you can find them. So you'll go into your agency over here. Then you'll go into encounters. And at the very end, you'll have abyssal dead space. Then down in the middle here, you'll be able to find another tab that you can press. And you're getting to that screen I was just showing you about. So first of all, there's different levels of abyssals. But we'll be concentrating on right now are T0s and specifically T1s, electricals. They are different types of abyssal. We'll cover all of them uh, just now. But first, let me explain to you that there are different levels of abyssals. Starting from T0 at the top to T6 at the bottom. They have different names and every one of them has a different icon. It's pretty easy, you don't really have to learn the names as you can just count the notches on the icon as well and it will tell you what level difficulty it is. Now, there is one exception to that rule and this is T6, which only has five notches on the icon, but it has a stronger glow than the T5. But all of the other ones, you can count the notches and it will tell you what level it is. So T0 has none, T1 has that one, little notches here, two notches there, and so on and so forth. So with the name of the filaments, you'll also have a weather type. So you'll have, let's say, a tranquil electrical type. Or a tranquil dark type. 
filament. If I show you in my hall, I have a few already in here. So I have some calm electrical filaments. You might see them very often when you log in. You might receive some every few days. So those what will will be needing to be running abyssals. A little bit more about this further as we go. So the first one we'll be looking at is darks. Dark abyssals give so every abyss with different weather types will be giving you bonuses and drawbacks. If you go into a dark abyssal, the bonuses you'll be receiving will be that your ship will go faster, but your turret range will be reduced tremendously. What does that mean? It means that missiles are unaffected since it's not a turret. So missiles are pretty good, while your enemy are still affected by the weather types. And so if you go in with a missile boat and you're you're basically having no drawbacks, but your ship goes a lot faster still, so you're keeping all of the bonus, which means speed tanking and range tanking can be pretty effective in dark abyssals. Now we have electrical. Electrical is the most ran type of weather, and this is because you get a lot of really nice, neat bonuses. Well, I say a lot. The one bonus, capacitor bonus, is massive. It allows you to make a very hungry fit, and then when you're in the abyss with that fit, you will get 50% capacitor bonus recharge to your recharge rate, and it allows you to have a very sustainable ship, even though it has, let's say, dual reps as an example, or something along those lines. Now, you also get a drawback to your EM resistances. So what does that mean? It means that if you can apply EM damage to the enemy, then please do so. And in your fit, also think that you will have less EM resistance. So you're probably going to want to have some way to cover that hole. Now, exotic is a little bit the same. You are going to have a kinetic resistance hold created instead so please apply that sort of damage with whatever kind of uh, weapon system you are using and the bonus you're getting is a little bit irrelevant it's a bonus to scan resolution which means that you're be scanning a little bit faster in the enemy as well so it's a little bit of a better bonus for the enemy since they'll be able to lock onto you faster at the beginning of re every abyssal room and then apply their ECM on top of you, or anything like that. Now for Firestorms, you're getting a massive bonus to your armor HP, which sounds nice in theory, but in practice, in the Abyss, most of the enemies are armor tanked as well. There's more of them than there is of you, so the enemy has more bonuses out of that than you are getting. But and the drawback is that everyone has a thermal resistance hole. You know the drill at this point. Use that type of damage and uh, plug the hole on your own ship because of that thermal damage. And the EM damage are pretty much a two damage that you'll be considering the most in the abyss. Most rats that are very dangerous are going to use either thermal or EM damage. And so keep that in mind. Now for Gammas, you're getting a massive bonus to shield, which is a little bit better because there's not a lot of rats or there's not a lot of dangerous rats that is in the abyss that are actually t shield tanked. And so you benefit a lot more than they are. Even some rats don't have shields at all. And then you create an explosive resistance hole while you're in there. So what does that mean? It means also that your uh, passive shield fits are a lot more effective in there since you're receiving a lot more HP. Keep in mind that the more HP you have on your shield, the more regen you're getting naturally out of it too. Now there's a lot of different things in the abyss. Uh, first of all, when you jump into an abyss, how is it? How is that done? Well, you'll need, if you're in a frigate, which I'll be talking about right now, you'll be needing three of them. You'll be needing to double-click or right-click and then use the traces, and you'll need three of them in your hull. If you're going to be running them with a team of three, you need to be in frigates. A team of two, you need to be in destroyers, and if you're going to be running them alone, you're, you need to be in a cruiser. Now, since we're running the low-level ones, you could solo in a frigate, as I'm about to do right now, or in a destroyer. 
the advantage of that is that you're going to keep all the loot to yourself, first of all. But you're still going to need to use three felimits. If you're in a frigate, two, and if you're in a destroyer, and when you pop the menu, they're going to ask you, what are you running right now? Choose the right ship. If you're running destroyer or frigates, even if you're by yourself, you need to be sure to create a fleet. Because since this content is designed to be run in the fleet, um, the game is assuming that you are in the fleet. So just let's form a fleet real quick. Start the abyss. Now, need to wait for that counter over here. Axel. And then you would just press this here. It will create a trace. They're a lot like wormholes, visually and also mechanically. You will have to approach the trace, and then in all your overview, select it, or in space, and then you'll have to jump it, just like a gate. Pretty simple. And then you activate. It will jump on the other side. There is a few things we'll be able to see once we are on the other side. Amongst those other things, we'll be able to see the gate. It's always going to be about in the middle of the screen. I'm going to hold the C button to look over there. So it's about in the middle of the screen, or in the middle of the room. Right now, we're in an arena, and there are invisible walls around us that could kill us if we go beyond that line. They are not going to attack us just now, so we'll take that time to activate our modules, which will not trigger them just yet. And then let's try to keep good transversal and move away. So this is one thing, the transfer conduit. conduit. This will not open up until we've killed everyone in this room. So let's start doing that. I'll pull out my drones. I'm running a Tristan. I'll talk about fits a little bit later on and send them over there. Now, other things that you'll be finding in the abyss while my drones are killing everything. You'll be finding the biocombinative cache. Now, this is the most important of piece of loot. You'll always hang out kind of by the gate, and you need to destroy it for it in order to be dropping loot. So let's start shooting at it with my guns. That is one thing. Other things that you'll be finding are those kind of towers over there. There's two kinds of them. One, like this one right now, will pulse in an orangish hue, and it will make it that everyone, enemies included, are going to be receiving a bonus to their tracking. Which means that they can hit for harder. Same goes for yourself, or your drones, or stuff like that. The other kind that you'll be seeing, those are called multi-body tracking pylons. The other kinds you'll be seeing are called Deviant Automata, Automata Pylons, and those one will destroy your drones and also your missiles if you are within their range. And they will also be... They will also be um, spewing a few sparks everywhere, like fireworks, so it's very easily noticeable. Now, beside that, if I was to die, since I'm ruining those by myself, I could re-enter the trace that I'm leaving behind in space. Now, that trace I'm leaving behind in space is scannable, and people could be waiting for me to kill me once I finish my abyss. And so it's very um, important for you to put it in a safe spot and be sure that you're kind of hiding it somewhere. we've touched about this so once you're doing t1s if you're if you want to be doing this in t0s feel free to do so there's less enemies and a little bit less loot obviously they are beside a bio cache there's going to be side caches like those ones they're always like kind of stuck on a rock like this it's very dangerous because walls are usually nearby i'm going to recall my drones 
I'm orbiting the gate right now, so I'm in a safe spot. So if you have disconnect problems, you always want to be orbiting something. So if you disconnect, at least you're gonna not gonna be flying out of bounds. Now those are kind of dangerous. They take time for you to go outside over there and then loot it and come back. There's a risk of you getting stuck in the rocks. So very dangerous to loot these while you're in combat, and then also the risk of you flying out of bounds. Now that we've finished the one room, we're going to have to jump to the next one. There's always three rooms in the Abyss. Um, that's not true in T5, but we're not going to talk about this for this tutorial. In T1s and below, or T2 and T3s, that's fine. We have two enemies here, so same as before. Now we're in movement compared to in the first room. Another thing you'll be finding into the Abyss are those weird wisps of clouds ar around. We have an orange one and a white one over here. So the white one, if we were to head around there, will give us massive speed, but will be very slow to turn. So our agility will be nerfed like crazy. Let's start with the Kikimora, so it's, it does a lot of damage. Now, so I'll try to show you and in going into it over there. The orange cloud, and there's also yellow clouds, they're both, they're not that great. Uh, they're not that bad, but they will make your shields and armor a lot worse so they will rep for not as much and they will go much faster so your capacitor will actually be um tanking down a lot faster now, i'm out, i am overeating all of my stuff hopefully this kikimura does not kill me should be getting into the white cloud very soon come on buddy now, T1s are very dangerous. I might be do dying over here. It should be doing T0s. Seems like they, my, my drones are not really hitting anything because they are in the white cloud. And as you're seeing, they're having a hard time actually uh, not bouncing around so hard. My modules are going down. Now, this is done on the test server, so that's no problem. Should still be all right. Normally, I would not have gone into that white cloud. As you're seeing, I'm going very fast now. I should be able to run away from the enemy. They have 25 range going to the gate. So hopefully, that will be enough time for my drones to kill it before it gets on top of me, getting buying me some time. So besides that, that's about all of the different things you'll be seeing into the different abyssals. There is, this is how the wall looks like when you're going in the abyss. If you're seeing that wall, please click away, move away, approach something else. You're about to die very quick. The further along you go, the deeper, the more damage you're going to be taking. All right. We were able to take down that Kikimora while I was offline. That was not without problem. I have very good skills. Keep in mind for the Tristans. Oh, we're in a white cloud again. So that might not be too bad, since it's a Dama thing. Now, I will be coming out with more videos about uh, more tips about Abyssals, deeper fits. But for now, let's keep going. So those are the different hazards. You also, I forgot to mention, have to say that there is a timer at the top left of your window. And you have 20 minutes to kill everything. If you don't, then your ship blows up, your pod blows up. And there's nothing you can do about that. Once you're in the Abyss, you have to kill everything in every room and then come out within 20 minutes or you're pretty much dead. We're going to jump into the next one then to show you that it's very dangerous. I, I can't right now. As you can see, I clicked the button, but this is not that good. I almost forgot my drones anyway. That would be pretty bad in a fit where all of my damage is coming from drones. I haven't been using my Auto cannons, but they're mainly meant for the cash anyway. So there are a lot of different things that can kill you in abyssals. Newts, scrams, web, damps, you name it. Uh, it will be in the abyss. So it's very important for you to figure out what will kill you first. Now in T0s and T1, it's not too bad. Um, there's not much... Um, damage coming in and if you're running t zeros as long as you're you know having a proper fit you'll be fine we'll talk about fits later oh and this is the last type of cloud i forgot to mention the blue one will um actually 
blow you up, not blow you up, but bloom your signatures, making it you much easier to hit. Let's sign our drones on those guys. Alright, our drones are going. We should be alright. We'll go straight past them, but we'll have pretty good transversal. So I should be about able to survive the initial onslaught. But that's definitely not how I should be driving. I should, plus, I'm going to be in the blue cloud. I should have been running away from them. And um, and that's it. But I think as I go by, I should survive. But I, should, I will probably die. Let's be honest. Let's overheat our stuff. So as you can see, this is a ruthless place in the Abyss. Keep in mind, this is a T1 fit. A T0 fit meant to... To, to do T-Zeros, not T-1. So I was uh, just showing you a little bit what will happen. So if you're in there, you're dead, and there's nothing you can do. You can't save your spot, your pod. But if I was to get out, wait for them to kill me, or suicide and wait two minutes, since this is meant for three people, I could jump back in, come loot my wreck, kill those guys, and come out as long as everything is done within 10 minutes. You want to be sure to be driving properly, as I just showed you. I most likely would have been able to run a little bit further at first and just stay away as long as possible from the enemy and try to apply as much damage before they can get on top of you. That definitely is the better way to play. You'll be able to meeting a few different factions. Let's uh, kill sounds a little bit, thank you. Now, we'll be meeting a few different factions, so I'll go over the few different kinds of ships that we'll be going through, uh, especially the very dangerous ones. So, the room we just had previously was the Kikimora rooms, the Klerglavian ships. Depending on, uh, every time you go in a room in the Abyss, you'll be at the, receiving a different mix and match of... Um, different rats so if you're having a triglavian rooms you'll be having a different miss and mash of all of those over here now you will have the size of the ship so let's say if it's a domovic that's the domovic here and then those finer points at the bottom is the extra name or modifier if you prefer that that domovic will have so you could have an anchoring domovic or a starving domovic and so on and so forth so if you look up, all of them have different attributes, different things that they will do, and, and that's uh, very important for you to learn them as you develop uh, into d harder difficulties. At first, in T0s and in T1, then it's not going to be much of a problem, and it's a perfect training ground for you to learn what they're going to do. Also, there's very neat cheat sheets that you can find online like this one that i'll be linking in the description that you can keep on your second monitor uh, to refer to when you get into a room okay those are the triglavian domovic anchoring what does it do and then you have the little icons everywhere telling you uh what it it's going to be doing to you before they get on top of you obviously you can know what they're going to do once they start applying but in the perfect world you'd like to take down the bigger threats as fast as possible sometimes the bigger threat is just the bigger damage of course now in this room the triglavian ship i'd say the biggest the biggest threat is definitely the kikimoras as they can apply their damage to pretty much any size and they have beautiful tracking and it often comes down to a dps race in between if they can kill you or you can kill them and as time goes on they do more and more damage so that should definitely be your main concern beside obviously all of the different things they could apply to you like webbing could be the uh, signing your death sentence so it's very important to identify those now, as far as the rogue drones go, there's not a lot uh, to say. They're just drones. Usually, they're not that much of a problem. Again, just go through the list of what is dangerous to you. Webbers, painters, or, or um, the overmine can be, do a lot of damage. So, keep transversal. So, obviously, any battleships, you always want to keep transversal on top of them. So, that way, you are not receiving 100% of their damage you're a harder target to hit 
for the drifter ship, the one thing you need to mention I need to mention is Charybdis Tyrannos. The Abyssal community has nicknamed her Karen as she's very fickle. Uh, most of the time she's not a problem, but sometimes she will just do what we call a wrecking shot or so critical hit, and it most likely just will one shot a frigate, or you'll be deep into your hull stru or structure, and the next one you'll be dead. So you need to be keeping transversal up as much as possible, and and um get on top of her within 500 meters if you can turn off your prop mod orbit or uh, orbit her over there and be sure that when you're getting on top of her you're not approaching her in a straight line but you're kind of doing that that swooping around motion around her Now for Eden Calm, one thing uh, important to note is that they have bouncing damage, so a little bit like in other MMOs, fantasy-based MMOs, they have like chain lightning properties. So if you're running with friends or with drones, it means that you're if you're all in the pack, all of you are going to eat damage all at the same time, so it can be pretty frustrating. So be sure to maybe spare, uh, if you're being targeted, that your drones are further away from you. And know that when they get hit once, if you're the main target, it, it was just because they were on their way to the next target and they're still fine now. They're not being shot at. Now for Sencha's nation, the highest threat is the knight on the grid. It has high DPS, it has newts, it has webs. And so if it gets on top of you, it's going to hurt. You're not going to be able to rep for a long time since your newt is going to, your capacitor is going to go down and you're going to be very slow. So they're going to get, be able to uh, apply their damage quite easily. And the hunters as well is high DPS. Now, most of the rats in the abyss have pretty inspired names. So, as you can see here, Webbers for the Sanchez Nation are called Fishers. And so, most of the time, if we look up at the other one, here, drainers, they do newts, so it's very inspired, right? So if you don't know what they're going to do, you can look up at their name and kind of try to to um, extrapolate what they're going to do. Now, the angel room is most likely going to be the biggest threat in, uh, in, in over there. So they have two kinds of Cinebold and two kinds of Dramules. They have uh, the elite version and the normal version. They both can newt and web. And um, the elite version obviously is much stronger, does more DPS and has more HP. So they should definitely be your two main targets, the Cinnabols and the Dramules. Dramule first since they're frigates, easier to pop. Uh, and then Cinnabols, normal Cinnabols are pretty easy too. They don't have a lot of HP, but the elite versions are pretty hard to hit and um, can be very problematic. The Angels ship also are known for their speed. And so they will get on top of you. Running away from them is pretty hard. And so uh, trying to to get away from them at first. But just know that they will get there. And you're just delaying the inevitables. Which is still what you should do. But nevertheless, uh, be careful with that one. Now, um, solo or fleet options. Well, if you're going to be running, in, as I explained already, uh, solo, you can do all of them. Um, but they're designed to be done as three in a frigate, two in a destroyer, one in a cruiser. Now, there is a few fits. So if you want to splurge a little bit, you just want to be doing your dailies, you have extra isk, I would definitely recommend the worm over here. Uh, it's definitely one of the bat best option for T1s or any T2 assault frigates. So since the EVE University, we're, we're geared a little bit more towards new bros. Uh, we often don't have T2 fits, and so I do still have a few over, and that'll be putting in the description, but uh, Worm would be your highest alpha version, if you're not Omega, of a ship that you can run, uh, and is pretty effective in T1, so this is what you would be putting in there. Now, if you don't have the skill points, but you still have a little bit uh, um, of... Uh, of, if you don't have the is, but you still have a little bit of skill points, can't do T2 ships just yet, I would suggest the Punisher. The Punisher is probably the best hull as far as the normal 
halls. Lasers do tremendous amount of damage. They apply pretty good. And so that would be the fit that I recommend when I teach my class in EVE University uh, for new bros to start in T zeros. Uh, the Punisher fit over here. And if you have very high skills, maybe T2 lasers, then you might even try to go for T1s if you can break about 150 uh, damage per second. Now the Tristan is definitely the best option for T0 if you have the the skill points to be running at least three or four drones. Um, you can run away as fast as possible from the enemy and um, your drones are doing all of the damage. Whatever you put on the high slot is irrelevant. They're just there to shoot at the cache to loot a little bit faster while your drones are doing the work if you're not in, into any immediate threat. And that's about it. Of course, you can always meta up, which means, you know, putting better modules in there. But it doesn't really matter. So it's a very, very cheap fit. But keep in mind that the prices over here are not updated. So if I'm not mistaken, uh, in this picture, the worm is 140 million. That sounds about right. It's very expensive for t running T1s. So that's why if you compare it to the Punisher, it's about 10 million. So that's a big difference if it's only for you to farm um, T zeros or your dailies. Now uh, that's the same worm. I'm sorry. Now there are deeper fits, of course. If you want to go deeper into the abyss, um, you're gonna have to go uh, into a cruiser, especially if you're by yourself. If you're gonna be running in a team, you're gonna be needing T two hulls. We'll be having other classes for that kind of content in the future. Now, what can you find in the Abyss and why is it so lucrative once you go up there? Well, first of all, uh, in the Abyss, I talked already about the biocache and the side cache are about on, on the walls or rocks flying around. So the biocache will spawn just about everything that you see here. So there's a slight chance that you will be receiving any of those pieces of gear. And it's the only place where everything can spawn. Whereas in the side caches, the only thing that will be spawning is either Triglavian Survey Database, Zero Point Condensate, or Great Crystals, not shown over here, uh, called uh, Crystalline Isogen. So the Red Barrel and the Great Crystals, those are materials that you'll be needing in order to build Triglavian stuff like ships or weapons or even ammo. While the Triglavian Survey Database are a little bit like Overseer effects in EVE, where you sell them to NPCs, any Concord station around in high sec or so on uh, will be able to buy them at 100,000 a piece and it's never been changed so far. And so it makes the, the loot very stable and the, the ISK per hour that you can make very stable as well. Uh, as the far end content of it in T6, you can make about 400 to 600 million an hour in the cruiser. In, in three frigates, you could do about uh, 900 to a bill in two an hour, uh, divided by three, of course, um, for the frigates. Now, most people will only get the biocache to get a chance to get a big chance, not a big chance, but more chances. So if you go faster, only loot one thing and then leave as fast as you can, you get more chances of getting the blueprints, the skill books that are very, very expensive and uh, lucrative for you to sell. And more importantly, mutaplasmid. Mutaplasmid is a little bit of lottery item in EVE where you apply it to another item and then it changes it for the better or worse. And then you have a chance of making something amazing or something awful. You can sell the mutaplasmids for a lot. And if you roll something good with it, instead of selling it, uh, selling the mutaplasmid and you keep it to apply it on an item, you may sell the item if it's a good one for even more. We're talking about a billion for an item sometime and more. Now, there is a lot of different places in EVE where you'll be about to uh, able to find information. Uh, the more important ones, I'd say, is in-game. The Abyssal Lurkers in-game channel is where you'll find most of the... Uh, it's the biggest community in EVE uh, for um, Abyssals. They have a lot of fits over there. A bunch of brilliant people have been playing for much longer than me and know a lot more than me. 
um, put a lot of effort in that channel and community. So I would definitely suggest that you go in there. If you are in EVE community, we also have the Abyssal EVE University channel. And uh, there's a few links over there and that you'll be able to find into the description below. You also have a few pages. Most of it is all found on the Abyssal Lurker, the Abyssal Ch Lurker channel and also their Discord channel. So I won't repeat most of it uh, because it's just going around in circle at this point. And I'm looking quickly if there's anything else I'm not for, uh, mentioning. So far, so good. So feel free to pause the video and read over here or look into the description. Now, this is usually taught live in front of other people. So if you had questions, I would tell you, please uh, ask. But keep in mind that you can always just uh, comment underneath, uh, like or subscribe, like they say, or whatever. And I'll be sure to respond to any questions you might have. And uh, soon we'll have more resources and more information about the Abyssal. And so please stay tuned. I hope you all have a great day and thank you for tuning in.